welcome to my review of Vorwex Thermomix TM6. So I've set it all out to show you what comes with the machine when you unpack. So you get your base unit, you get your Varoma or steaming basket lid and tray, you get a lid, you get a splatter guard, a measuring cup, butterfly whisk, spatula and your jug. So that's what's included. We'll talk about the motor capacity of the Vorwex. It's a maintenance-free Vorwex reluctance motor, 500 watt rated power, continuous speed, continuously adjustable from 100 to 10,700 revolutions per minute. A gentle stir is 40 RPM. There's special settings, alternative modes for donating. There's electric motor protection protect overload. Its heating system is 1000 watts power consumption and again there's a protection against overheating. It has an integrated scales um, measuring range from 1 to 3000 grams, so 3 kilos or from minus 1 to minus 3000 grams. Um, it's got a stainless steel 2.2 litre bowl with heating system and temp temper temperature sensors integrated. Its connection load is for 220 to 240 volts or 50 to 60 hertz. Um, the maximum power consumption is 1500 watts. It has a pull out power cord one meter long. Standby power usage is zero watts. Um, the base unit weighs 7.95 kilos and the weight of the Roma is 0.8 kilos. So it also comes with your user manual which is in English, um, I believe, Chinese. It comes in three languages. So again, it's a bit more multicultural. It is very comprehensive. There's lots of pictures um, and symbols explaining all how to use it in terms of risks and hazard. It also comes with a basic cookbook. There's different editions. So at the front, it talks about an introduction. You've got colored pictures and recipes. And at the back, there's a whole heap of extra information and resources on functions. So it simply turns on by pressing the silver knob at the front. It's got a nice big LCD screen. Has a nice handle at the back, so it is simply able to be lifted with one hand. It's not the easiest to lift with one hand, but you are capable of lifting it. When you turn it on, it comes up to a base screen with a time dial temperature dial and speed dial. The screen's interactive, so if we swipe to the left, it brings up a heap of functions, so stat, scales, blend, dough, slow cook, turbo, sous vide, pre-clean, fermenting kettle, rice cooker, and thicken modes. And if we scroll back to the left, it's our inbuilt cookie do recipe collection. So you can search simply on your machine, the different recipes, it gives you pictures and different ideas. Um, it's also got a settings button, so on the machine you can have bookmarks, create a collection, save collections, create a collection so you can make your own recipe collections and save it to your thermics to be able to use. Save collections are any of the cookbooks that are available through Cookie Do. It also has My Week, so on the machine you've got your inbuilt recipe planning, which hooks up again to the app, which we won't go into too much. Again, anything recently cooked comes up, so if you've got a saver and looking for it, you don't have to search, you can go through recently cooked, but it's also got the settings. So we're able to adjust our language to a multitude of languages. So it is a very multicultural um, machine catering for not just English speaking owners. Again, we can set it up in terms of countries and region. It is Wi-Fi connected, but doesn't need to be. We have options with sound. So I really like this. I've got kids with sensory needs. So being able to adjust the volume as to what it's doing, the duration as well as the melody makes it really handy. I can also adjust the screen display brightness depending on where I am. It has a transportation mode. So I'm able to securely lock it down if I want to take it anywhere. I take it in the caravan when we go away or if we go to family and friends or on holidays, I'm able to take it all with me so I can lock it down. I'm able to determine my whether I'm doing imperial or metric for when I'm doing recipes. 
uh, it lets me know if there's any updates and if needed I can do a factory reset. So we're going to start, we're going to get into our scales and I'm going to get our jug. So it's got a nice big handle, you can hold it at the top or the bottom for being able to pour. So it's nice, nice and sturdy. So the scales are sensitive and are in one gram increment so I'll make sure I'm not bumping the table. Our jug can, or bot, jug can only go in one way and weighs 1139-140 grams. So again it can only go in one way so it's easy to be able to use. We can reset our scales. So now we're going to put our lid on. Our lid is 240 grams. We'll add our measuring cup. So it's about 80 grams. So now I'm going to tear it. can lift it all up. Lifts up straight and I'm going to weigh the whole bowl with a measuring cup. So all up it's 1,460 grams. Again, I'm able to use it one-handed, whether or not it's left hand or right-handed, so if there are issues, fine motor. Again, it lifts straight up. It is a bit hard to lift up, and when you get first get used to it, it can be a struggle. So lift up, but I don't have to lift it too high before I'm able to bring it forward. Again, if I'm using more my right dominant hand, it lifts straight up. It does fit in quite tight. So as I said, it's then got our splatter guard, which sits on top. So if we're doing any cooking, we've got the additional feature. We have our Varoma with our clear lid, our tray and our base, which again allows for multi-level stack cooking, it sits on top. Everything can be sit together. The lid's also reversible and I like that it's got two handles so I can lift it off. I don't have to lift in the middle to help with any steam. You can also turn it around and then it becomes a tray. The lid sits on securely on the middle tray or again it sits on quite securely on our top tray so there's no I guess concern with it falling off when we're using it. We've got our spatula again it's got a guard as well as a lid so when you're resting it it's not going to touch the table. The spatula when it goes through the lid doesn't go into our blades. It's also got a hook and it also comes with a measuring basket which I forgot to get out. So again our handle hooks into our basket allowing us to lift it out. It's got a lid on top as well as a maximum indicator guide. The handle can go in with either the lid open or lid closed and it's a nice simple motion of being able to turn it out. I'll take our lid off and then we've got our bowl again it's got our markings inside to tell us where our maximum capacity is we've got our blades and we've got our butterfly which sits on just slips on easily behind the high blade again it can be hard to get on if you've got a full bowl and then it pulls off to undo it there's a triangle this can be very difficult especially for a new bowl again it requires two hands one hand on the handle and then you have to twist towards the triangle, our base comes off and then our blades come apart. Again, it's got our rubber seal. It's also got a green base to let us know it's the newer model. If we look at the bottom, it's also got a safety latch to let us know that when it leaks into our base that it's all in securely. So it's a bit of an extra safety feature that has been added. To put it back, blade goes on, base goes on and we can simply twist it. So as I was saying at the bottom you can see your green base and our little lug has moved over so it can go in our Thermix. Thermix can be bought Australia wide and internationally it's sold through consultants so it's not something that you go into a shop to buy. Doesn't matter where you are in relation to a consultant, any consultant can assist you with purchasing it. It comes with a to the warranty. Um, I guess the support with Thermix is a bit different because it comes to you through a consultant. They assist with your delivery, they assist with your setup and they're here to um, provide assistance if you need anything during your time owning a Thermix. But it gives you choice. If you don't want to have a consultant assisting, you don't have to. You can certainly do it alone. There are service centres located around Australia to be able to send Thermix off to to get any parts or replacements or services done. It also has 
a mix shop where you can buy any accessories or replacement parts if needed. So I'm going to put our measuring our books away and we're going to see how it goes when we fill it to capacity. So again, I like the handle. It's nice and easy to lift up. One hand can be done. So just filled up our jug to the maximum capacity. Again, lift it easily with one hand. There is a bit of wobble um, with strength issues. Put our lid on. Now we're going to see how it goes when we set it for a minute. No, I think we did 30 seconds on speed 10. So it's a nice easy, simply touching the dial or using the silver button to move from screen to screen. We start with our time, we don't need a temperature, and then going to start at the speed 10. So at the end it plays a tune to let us know it's finished. I like the indicator lights letting us know that it's green at the moment which means it's cool. Once the bowl starts heating up and temperatures above 65 it changes to red. You can stop the sound by pressing the button. Again, handle is able to be used one hand so I can tip it forward allowing any steam to escape. Um, turn it over, lift it back up. You will notice that when we did first turn it on there was a bit of a splash out to the side of the lid but it's got a nice rim that nothing actually came out on the machine. So again, if it is at full capacity, there may be some additional splash that comes out on the lid. Provided you've got your lid and measuring cup in place, you shouldn't have an issue with it going everywhere. So again, now we've got our bowl. Uh, we're going to have a go at uh, making our dough. So again, we have the option of guided cooking uh, with Thermix. I'll just do a quick search on our screen. I said you can use guided cooking on the Thermix or you can also use it on extra devices and apps. So if I just plug in pizza dough, similar to we did, again it comes up with a picture. We can scroll and give us our ingredients, preparation, utensil, utensils, nutritional panel, hints and tips. If I go start cooking, it comes up with a picture as well as one instruction at a time tells us at the top how many steps we need to go through. So this has got one of 14 for our dough. Simply pressing next, it goes through each step, letting us know what we need to do. But we're gonna show you how to do it manually. So we go to our scales, I'll get my water. I need uh, 300 grams of water. So it goes up in one gram increments. It, the scales are a little bit slow at catching up to where you are, so need to be mindful and go slow. So we've added our water, our teaspoons of sugar. It's always good to put it around the outside of the blade so it gets mixed in properly. So it's got a bookmark if we're part way through a recipe which you can click on, click on to go back to but we're not using our recipe so we just want back to our home screen. We want to set it for two minutes so simply turning our knob to two minutes. Uh, so the first minute it goes up in one second increments and it's 10 seconds. We need to set it to 37 degrees and we want it on oh, 37 degrees speed one. So one of the features I like, you just noticed that I forgot to put our lid on. It's actually detected that I didn't have a lid on due to that automatic locking arms. So again, now put the lid on, can go back and turn it to speed one. So it's very quiet. So again, noise, if it is an issue, can be something to consider. As I said, being a 2.2 litre bowl, I know for some that is too small. Larger families would prefer a larger capacity bowl. So that is a bit of a downside for the Thermomix. Price is another downside for the Thermomix. But I guess the Thermomix is good as it allows you to have a number of options to be able to get it. 
So you can buy it up front, you can earn it, and there are also different payment plans and options to suit everyone's circumstances. So you'll notice it is finished, and because it was involved in some temperature, it has a cooling down phase before it unlocks the lid. It's got a chime at the end, then it unlocks our lid. Simply press our button to stop our beeping, and we'll have a look how our yeast and water is all being mixed together. Now we want to go back to our scales. So now we've got to add about 450 grams of flour. So it goes up in one gram increments. Pour on a little bit over. That's okay. So next, again, put our lid back on. Go back to our main screen. Well, set it to six seconds. Now we're going to turn it to speed six. So again, doing that high speed there is a bit more sound to it. Um, the chime at the end, letting us know it's finished. Now, it's got its specific function for need. So we can scroll across, go to our dough function, and set our timer for two minutes. Turn to dough, and then we detect it, and it's going to adjust and do a needing function. So we are using the firm mix today on an outdoor um, picnic table on a concrete surface to see how it goes without being in a kitchen bench. There is some wobble in the dough mode as you can see, so it's something you wouldn't want to leave the firm mix unattended while making dough. It does have three rubber feet on the bottom. So you can see the vibration is starting to make some of the stuff move on our table. The thermix hasn't actually moved too much, but the other things that don't have that rubber base are moving. So now it's finished, simply press our, to stop the beeping. Our arms unlock. Let's get our thermo serve. Lift our jug out. As I said, it does have some weight in it and there is our dough that's mixed. So using the bottom handle, use one hand and now we scrape our dough into our bowl. Spatula is nice and sturdy so I was able to scrape that dough out quite easily. There is still some dough stuck around the blade. So with one of the features of or functions of the thermix is actually turbo mode. So I can go into turbo mode, locks our lid in, set it to one second, change it to two seconds. And it helps to free up the dough that was caught around the blade. Press home to unlock our lid. So it can be slow in terms of unlocking our lid, but you can see most of the dough is out from underneath the blade. So I just get the spatula around and scrape it. Right, so again, I undo the base, take our blade out, so we just get rid of this extra dough from the blade. And scrape the bottom a bit easier. But there's not really much left in our Put that face back in, lock our lid back on, going to put our dough over here to rise, and now the jug hasn't been put in properly so you see it's sitting higher, because it's not actually locked in so. So there's something wrong with the jug at the moment. You notice it's actually not sitting properly in it. So the safety feature at the bottom is not actually allowing our jug to go into place. So I'll undo it and our blade's not in properly and we'll try again. 
So that's really handy to know that if the blade and jug's not in properly, you'll notice the lug is fixed properly. The jug actually can't be used in the thermo mix without it being in place properly. Now I'm going to add some water to cover the blade. We do have a pre-clean function on the thermix, but we're going to give it, just put it on a minute and speed 10 and see how it goes. Then our lid will unlock. Lift the lid off. So you notice the Speed 10 has made our it all frothy. I'll go and empty it. So we'll come back. You see, Speed 10. There's very little dough still left in our bowl. So now I'm going to show you how to use our spatula and our basket. So it sits in nicely. It's got the maximum capacity at the top, so we can't overfill it. We'll simply open it up and now we're going to weigh it with some ice. So it's about half a kilo. Um, you notice at the moment our hole is at the back. I guess when putting our basket in, it's always handy if we put the little lug to the front so when it's finished cooking, you don't have to put your face over it. Using our spatula, put it in the hole and we can lift it up and it's quite sturdy so we are able to empty it. The other thing you can do so the lid doesn't fall forward when you are trying to empty it is lift it forward and then put our spatula through the hole. Again, it's quite sturdy. Now you can tip it and the lid of the seam basket is out of your way. So again, nice and sturdy. You can use that one hand. It's not going to weigh too much. Now we're going to tuck our ice um, into our bowl. I think I've got a little bit in the handle. So we'll take it out, put our lid back on. Now we're going to go back to our home screen. We're going to set it to uh, one minute speed 10 and see what happens when we crush it. <laughs> You'll notice that the sound of the blade started to change there after a few seconds. So I'm going to show you what's happening. You'll see at the bottom our blade is condensing, but the majority of our ice in three seconds has been cut up and it's quite small. There are some chunks in it. The other thing that you can do if you're doing a frozen fruit is actually use your spatula through the lid to help mix it around to stir it, to stop it actually condensing on the outside. Um, but I guess you don't need to go much further because I've shown you how quickly it is to be able to cut that ice. There are still some larger chunks in the bottom, but overall we've got basically a snow cone, snow powder. So I thank you very much for watching my review of the Thermix TM6 and look forward to...